He's been held by a militia in Zintan, southwest of Tripoli, since his capture in 2011. And his captors have refused to hand him over to the Islamist-backed government in Tripoli. It's not even clear they're willing to carry out the sentence. Even so, analysts say the verdict could be a big setback to Libya. I doubt the verdict will be implemented. The reactions were numerous. The Libyan Popular Front condemned the verdict. The UN envoy Baradino Leon was astonished in the timing of the verdict. It came at a time when he is negotiating with 77 representatives of Libyan tribes and militant groups to unify their vision, reaching negotiations for national reconciliation. The verdict interrupts all of that. Many of Libya's former ruling elite were among the defendants. Eight others also were sentenced to stand before a firing squad, including former intelligence chief Abdullah Hassanusi and former prime minister Baghdadi al Mahmoudi. Some of the defendants were already involved in war crime cases at the International Criminal Court, but Libya preferred to try Qazafi's son and their former officials in their country. That way, they could be sentenced to death a penalty the ICC doesn't offer. Tripoli also insisted it could provide a fair trial. Some observers question that. The victor is trying the defeated. That's not a fair trial conducted in regular circumstances in a transparent environment, following legal and constitutional rules of a fair trial. No, the situation in Libya will get worse if the verdict is implemented. It could be the final hit in the coffin of reconciliation. It will lead to a further deterioration in Libya. International rights groups say there are questions about the court procedures and whether the trial was politicized. Officials in Tripoli insist justice was done. The defendants have 60 days to appeal, and Libya's Supreme Court must still approve any death sentence. Aydil Mahroui, CCTV, Cairo.